Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about some financial lessons that I had learned that significantly changed my life. So let's get started. In this video, I basically wanted to talk about some of the financial lessons that I had learned. I was probably 19, 20 when I learned most of these lessons and I didn't really know anything about money in general. I never had to work in high school, thankfully, but because of that, I just never understood the value of a dollar. So that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. So anyone who's just in general struggling with building wealth, um, this video will be for you and I really hope that you'll benefit from it. But these are some of the things that I had learned and that have significantly impacted my life. So with that, I'm going to get to it. So the very first thing is that income isn't everything. And I say this out loud, it doesn't really make any sense because I am someone who majored in engineering specifically because of the income. The main reason why it was engineering instead of science or math is because it paid more and I only needed to get my bachelor's degree. I didn't have to get my PhD degree. So it was something that I'm like, well, might as well go to school for less amount of years and get paid more. But as I became an engineer and I started working um, as an intern even, I realized that it's you know, the money, it's great to have. And yes, it's, you know, it's wonderful to have money. It's just that it's not as great as what it's cracked up to be, especially when you're someone who doesn't like what you're doing. If you're in a workplace where you, you just don't like the work. Um, and I was kind of in that position as an intern. It was work that was more geared towards mechanical engineers. So it was a lot of testing and analyzing the data of heating up a material. And it wasn't completely awful. It's just something that I didn't really like to do, but it was also because I had to go into the office and just having to go there and make sure you're acting a certain way with your coworkers, with your manager. And even if you're not feeling up to it, you have to force yourself to be that way. You also have to you know, perform well. You have to show that you're doing work. It just all of that builds up a lot of tension and stress in your body and it just I hated doing that. I hated having to go in, into the office and everything around that is having to get ready for work, um, getting clothes for work, making sure that you have your lunch ready for work, driving to and from work, the commute, that all takes up time and then you end up with like a couple hours, two, three hours of just alone time. And during those hours, it's probably not for sleeping or resting, it's for um, doing errands, catching up on other things such as cleaning the house, uh, getting groceries, all of that stuff. All of it adds up and you just end up not having much time for yourself. All of those things I hated, I hated with a passion. So long and short of it is that if I continue going down this path and continue doing this work and going into the office, it doesn't matter how much I get paid, it's not going to be worth 40 hours a week for the next 30, 40 years. So that's what made me realize, okay, well, how else can I take advantage of this? And so that leads me to my second lesson, which is to save more than half your income. Now this doesn't have to be for everyone, but specifically for me, saving more than half is what really changed my life and opened my eyes to how much um, money I could I could save in general and also how that could benefit me later on so I don't have to work for the next 40 years. And the reason why is because of the 4% rule. For those of you who don't know, researchers did do a study where they check to see how long your money would last in the stock market if you had a certain amount of spending for that year. And as it turns out, if you have at least four times your annual spending, then you'll be okay. You're 95% likely to never run out of money and just use that 4% of the money that you have in there and to spend. That opened up my eyes and made me realize, wow, I don't have to work 40 years. I could work 10 maybe seven if I really push myself and maybe I could retire by 30, you know? So it was something that I was like, okay, great, I can do that. And the 50%, that is optional. I just think 50% is good if you want to retire earlier than uh, 65, which is the average. But if you want to, you know, do 15%, 20%, that's, that's okay too. I still think you should probably bump it up to at least 25% because from studies that I've read, there are people who do 15% and they still don't have enough to retire. Uh, but again, it's if they kept their expenses the same, their annual expenses. But I feel like when you get older and you do retire, your annual expenses will go down because you might um, downsize in home. So all of those things will play a factor in how much you'll actually spend for that year. That's something you should really focus on is try to save as much as you can, wherever you can. The next one is to diversify your investments. 
So this really helped me because I realized, okay, I don't need to just have it all in like the stock market. I mean, that's good too, but it's also good to diversify in terms of not only having it in stocks, but also having it in real estate. So you own a home. That's another good way to diverse your investments. Another one is to have it in maybe a little bit of bonds, like 20% or 10% of bonds. And this is mainly for those who are risk tolerant. So those who don't mind if they see their balance go up really high one day and then really down the next. If they don't get bothered by that, then that's great. And I think the best way to do it is to put some of that money into an aggressive growth ETF or fund. So those things are all part of diversifying your portfolio. Um, another thing that you could also put your money in, and this is something that I plan on doing when I do retire, is to put money into a dividend fund. This is basically a fund that has a higher dividend yield than the average. And I plan on doing this when I do retire so that I know that I have a guarantee like 4% for that year of my money. Even if the stock drops like 20, 30% like ha it has this year, um, I wouldn't have to worry about that because I would have at least 4% of what I have invested in there of the shares that I'm going to get back in dividends. Um, now I'd only suggest this if you're not working because the dividends do get taxed at your income tax rate. Um, so if you're not working, well, then you'll have very low taxes. If you're a single person, I think right now it's 12,000, so you could have up to $12,000 that won't be taxed on. The other reason why diversification really helped me in terms of finances is because I know now that I don't have all my eggs in one basket, and let's say I had it in a single stock like Apple, I don't have to worry about Apple like crashing the next day or going out of business or filing bankruptcy. I don't have to worry about that. Knowing that is a very um, nice way to put your mind at ease and you don't have to think about, okay, well, if that's gonna happen, what do I do with the money then? Or how do I get out of this and move to a different stock that I know is gonna do and perform well? And that's the other thing, you don't really know what's gonna perform well. So having your money in every category in every area or as much as you can will give you a better chance at having a higher income later on than what you have today. The next lesson I learned is defense is just as important, if not more important than offense. And what I mean by that is being a savvy saver. Uh, same with the number two, which is to save as much as you can. This one talks about how being more aware of what you're saving and what you're spending on is way more important than how much you make. Because as we all know, if you spend more than what you make, then you're never going to build wealth. You know, that's just how it is. So it doesn't matter if you make 200K, 100K, 50K, as long as your expenses are below your income, then you'll be able to build wealth. So that's something I think you should really pay attention to is that the defense, how much you spend, um, how much you save is way more important than how much you make because you, like I said, you can make a lot of money, but then if you spend it all and you're not aware of how much you spend, you're not aware of your outflow, then that'll come and bite you in the butt. The next lesson that I had learned is to read finance books. That's where I got most of my knowledge about finance and saving and investing is by reading books. I would say this is the number one financial lesson that I had learned. There's a whole list of finance books out there. I will put the top five that I found the most beneficial to me down below in the description box so you could go check that out. But off of the top of my head, the ones that I think were very helpful were uh, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing, The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins, and How to Be a Millionaire by Christy Shannon. I learned about investing, I learned about how to save, um, I also learned about the 4% rule and financial freedom with just those three books. So at the very least, if you decide to read any finance book, I would say these are the three that you should read. You'll be much more knowledgeable in how to build wealth and save and invest. And so the last finance lesson that I learned is money is time. And this is from the book that I had mentioned earlier from Christy Shen. And she talked about how she saw money is time instead of time is money. And I never thought about it like that, but when I read that book, I'm like, oh wow, that's very true. Um, and it opened my eyes to how you think about money and how people think about money and how they should think about money. When you have money, you're able to do what you wanna do later on um, and be financially free. So that's when I realized, wow, yeah, um, I need to think about it differently. It's not that time is money and 
that you, you know, every hour you could be making money. It's the other way around. It's like all the money that you did save or you do have will buy you back that time. You'll get that hour back. You'll get that day back, the week, the month, the year, so on and so forth. So it was something that really opened my eyes and it changed my mindset about money. And now I look at money as like time instead. For example, you go to the grocery store and you see a pound of chicken for like $5. Well, if you're someone who gets paid $20 an hour, $5 is one fourth of that hour. So you're basically spending 25 minutes just to get that chicken. And so learning about how money is time really opened my eyes to what is important and what isn't in terms of objects, clothes, things and entertainment, whether it's really worth that cost. Even if it's on sale, is it really worth $50? Is that laptop really worth $500, even though it was cut down from $700 or $800? You're still spending $500. So it's it just made me more mindful of how much I'm actually spending and whether or not it's actually worth it and whether or not I'll use it. So I always, whenever I buy something, I always think to myself, do I really need this? Uh, do I want this? Or am I just buying it because it's a good deal? So that's basically it for now. There's a whole bunch of other lessons that I learned, but I just wanna, you know, stop it right here because I don't want it to get too long. But if you guys want me to do like a part two of this video, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you found this video helpful and useful, um, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see similar videos, uh, please subscribe. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and thank you for watching. Bye.